Hi everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, it's December, it's almost Christmas time and I've got some major things that are happening in my life and I'll share those with you guys as they happen. But I would like to go over motors that are used in medical electronics. Now, the reason I wanna cover this is because there seems to be a lot of confusion with what type of motors are in what type of devices and how those motors are controlled. In order to understand if you have a motor problem or a controller or driver problem, you have to know what type of motor it is, how it's controlled and how it's speed regulated, and what to set your meter on to even check it to see if it's got a pulse or voltage. So we're gonna cover that today. We're gonna to go over motors and medical equipment. All right, stay tuned guys. The first device that I'd like to go over, this one here is a cochlear implant driver and you can see here I have a stepper motor it's only got four wires coming out of it I'll just go over what's going on inside here you got your AC that comes in it goes into this toroid transformer which either is just for isolation purposes or more likely it steps down the AC from 120 to probably let's say about 12 volts or 14 volts AC comes in here, you can see my rectifying diode, so it goes from AC to DC, and this big capacitor right here is evidence of your uh, DC bus. If you look right next to it, you see a giant plus. So that is a DC bus, and from here, your meter is gonna be on DC to check and see if you have uh, voltages. This right here is a controller chip, and over here, you have your stepper motor driver, which is this group of MOSFETs and I think yeah there's one over there these ones over here and this one over here and they control the speed of this stepper motor now the stepper motor is on a peristaltic pump normally a piece of tubing comes in here and based on the speed of this pump that is how much irrigation you're gonna have now the stepper motor it's got four wires and that's because two wires go to one coil and two wires go to the other coil. So there's technically two coils in this motor. And what it does is it alternates between the two coils, which is how your motor spins. It alternates back and forth really quickly, just very, very quickly. Now there's, there's multiple ways of testing a stepper motor. Stepper motors are very stupid. They don't check their speed they don't care what their speed is. It's just one direction. The pulses come to the motor and that's it. There's no feedback which tells you, let's say that you have an occlusion on your tubing or there, there's an, a jam here at the pump. There's no input that maybe with current, you might be able to do it with current. You know, current overload says now we have a problem with the motor. But without current sensing, which I don't see any uh, shunt resistors in here you would know a big shunt resistor would be a, a large like piece of metal that's in here without a shunt resistor or current sensing coils uh, this is really just a stupid circuit it doesn't really care and you have your stepper motor now you can test the pulses that come out because that's what it is is you have DC that comes out and DC runs most motors but what it is, is it pulses the DC so it looks like a square wave and it pulses it and the faster the pulses the faster the motor spins so you know you can imagine that you go nice and slow the motor goes slow and then the faster it goes the faster the motor spins and that's basically what this guy does is it increases the frequency of pulses and that's how the motor increases its speed so that would be a dumbed down system with one stepper motor your stepper driver. You could test the outcoming pulses with an oscilloscope and you would see your square wave. Or you could test the motor by disconnecting this wire right here and you short out two of these which would be your one coil and then the other two you can short out separately. And when you short them out you should notice a, a dramatic increase in the resistance to spinning the motor. And I mean a very dramatic increase. Like it'll be very tough to spin 
even at a really low RPM, like what you can see I'm doing right here. And if you go ahead and short out both coils, then this guy will be incredibly difficult to spin, even at a low RPM, because this guy actually generates electricity. It's a permanent magnet motor, so as you spin it, if I were to have my multimeter connected to these ports right here, you would see that I'm actually kicking out DC voltage. And you can kick out a considerable amount of voltage by spinning this guy. So that's why it's very dangerous on most devices to sit here and spin them while they're connected to a motherboard. Now this unit is broke, so I don't really care if I'm inducing voltage back into the circuit. And I imagine that this guy has got a snubbing diode to prevent that current, that onrush of current going backwards into the system from damaging your, your little CPU chip right here. That would be a stepper based system. It's very stupid. It doesn't matter. It's very easy to test to see if it's bad. And next we are going to go into a servo drive system. Now this next unit, this is a MyoSure and this is used in GYN procedures in operating room. The MyoSure has a servo motor. Down here is your servo controller and this is just a regular power supply. But the reason I know that this is a servo because first off you can see the DC wires coming in here and this guy back here is an encoder and the encoder feeds in down here to your servo driver and that is your feedback. So what it does is it kicks out a certain amount of voltage and it will spin this guy up using pulsed DC and then this guy here detects and gives a feedback for how many revolutions it has provided. Now the reason they do this is not only so that you can uh, adjust the period of time that it's spinning. You can tell I press the foot control and I release it and it continues spinning for a very designated period of time. But what it also does is it gives you the ability to detect errors. Now you can see down there, see the green flashing light on the motor? You can see it right here. Now watch as, as I stop the motor. See how it flashes red? So if your cutter head right here, this actually is like a cable drive cutter head. When, if your cutter head experience a jam or something, then this will throw an error code and it immediately stops the cutting process because there's a feedback. It knows that it didn't spin enough revolutions for what it was requested. You can see the green status flashing down there on the motor. So what's going on inside this console? You have your AC that comes in back here at your RF filter or EMI filter. Comes down in here and this guy is your low voltage DC power supply. I'm not really sure what voltage comes out of it, but it's probably about 9 to 12 volts, I would assume, based on the size of it. And down here, you have an off-the-shelf, this guy right down here is a servo driver. You can see it kind of buried underneath there. That's an off-the-shelf part, and what they did is they adapted this little switching card right here. And right down there is a air pressure actuated switch which comes up here and it turns on this transistor right here and it tells it to run a cycle and a cycle is a designated amount of revolutions right there so with a servo you can control speed you can control duration which is the amount of time that it's running and you can also detect errors this one here in order to diagnose it, you could use a multimeter, I suppose, but the best way is an oscilloscope, use an oscilloscope, guys. And this is gonna be regular DC. You can see that there's two wires right here instead of the four wires that were on the stepper motor. And that tells me that it's, it's pulsing DC on those two wires until the motor reaches its designated amount of time and then it stops. So this is a MyoSure. 
It's a very interesting little unit. Simple motor, simple encoder, simple power supply. Power supplies always go bad. I would check that guy if this thing's not turning on. And you can tell everything is nice and out in the open, very easy to troubleshoot. Although I've never really had any problems with these devices before. That's the Myosher. Now the last motor that I'm going to cover in this video is this guy right here that's found in a mixer unit. Mixers are found in dental offices or laboratories. And what it does is it takes a test tube and it shakes it really, really violently. You can see the mixer head right there. It grabs onto whatever and shakes it. This is the motor. And there's some big indicators. This is 115 volt on the outside. But this is called a universal motor. And the reason it's called a universal motor is because down there inside are brushes. You can see up there in the top right and the bottom left, there's brass brush holders. And the reason you call it a universal motor is because it can run on either AC, single phase, or DC if you really wanted to. This one is run off of single phase AC. This one doesn't really have a speed control. In fact, you can see down here it's got this optical interrupter and this perforated disc which actually helps it to start and stop the timer and maybe detect errors if there's a problem with the motor. But this motor here, the AC comes in and you can see that right over here is a full bridge rectifier and that's stripping off a little bit of that AC wave for DC to run your circuit board and the rest goes up into a large transistor which is on the other side of the board right over there and when you press the go button on the DC side it clicks over that transistor which closes the circuit and AC comes here to the motor so to test this one you could actually just hook up your multimeter on AC and hit the go and if you have 115 volts, 110 volts AC, you know that the motor is at least being told to turn on, and to which if it still doesn't, obviously those brushes would be suspicious. You can see on this motor here, it's got a white powder all over the place, and that's because of debris that comes in from the mixer. So if this unit has a problem, let's say it throws an error code instantly or it doesn't keep a routine schedule when you tell it to go for 15 seconds it, it shuts off prematurely or whatever this little opto interrupter right down here it relies on light and it shoots a light from one side of this disc and it's detected on the other side over here and all this powder gets down there and it blocks those diodes from being able to transmit the light so it thinks that your motor is stuck and it's never spinning, even though it could be probably spinning. So this unit here, it runs off of AC, could technically run off of DC since it's a universal motor, but it's a very simple circuit of how the electricity comes in, it converts a little bit over to DC, only enough to flip a switch or set the timer for the, the switch flip, and it turns on the AC to this motor, which runs it, shakes the little thing right there. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on so you guys can see what it does. You can see how the disc spins for the set period of time, which I believe is three or four seconds. It knows that the motor starts spinning, starts the timer, and the timer stops, shuts off electricity, and that's it. So that's the last motor, guys. That's a universal motor and how it's controlled via DC electronics. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please give me a thumbs up if you like it. I'm going to have more videos like this in the near future for you guys. But I just seen all three of these items and I really wanted to bring you guys this video. Give you a, a simple little explanation of what these circuits are and how they do what they do. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.